Welcome in, welcome in, welcome back to the Crypto Bully Bear channel, where we just have fun decoding and there is no financial advice on this channel. Now, real quick, I just want to show you if you're a newbie and you first time watching my channel, I just want to show you over here in this corner, see how it says twin? They're showing you there's a twin. Here's the, see the tower, say the clock tower. They're trying to tell you here's the twin. Now you see this black truck that comes into the set is going to drive around, all right? Let's see when it drives around. And I want you to also listen to what Marty says. Check out that four by four. That is hot. All right. Now, like I said, if you're a newbie here, funny how, I mean, I think this Russian-Ukraine war is the path to cryptocurrency. Now, just listen to me out, okay? There's a few things, and yeah, we're going to really be reaching in this one, but... This is what we do in my channel. We reach. We have fun. All right? Over here, it says gas war. Funny enough, nowhere in this movie do they talk about anything about pricing or how high the gas is or anything like that. Okay? But it shows you here, gas war. All right? Then, like I said, you got here, you got 109. We know that you can remove the zero. That becomes nine. So, you know, that could be C19. You got 911 here. That could be flipped to 911. And here, supposedly somebody said that the this thing, uh, the C19 came around March 11th of 2020. So that is a kind of crazy number there. And this all correlates to, you remember, on the bench right before the scene, before this car pulls up, they were showing you the twin sign and the tower sign over there. Now, this car pulls up in front, and you got gas wars and this type of stuff. And this is the reason why I think that this Ukraine and Russia war might be the start of a beautiful thing if you're holding crypto. Now, over here, it says another custom 4x4. You know, the Redwoods, you know, 4x4, I think of wood, and you get the Redwoods. But this here caught my eye here, Statler Toyota, okay? Statler really caught my name, and I'm going to go and show you why this actually caught my, caught my eye. And we're going to get into it right now. Let's go. Okay, as before, I was telling you about the um, Economist magazine. And it had the uh, Phoenix on the front cover. And we're talking about the Phoenix. Get ready for uh, New World Phoenix, right? New World Currency. I looked up this. And yeah, I did a video before. So just a real quick video here. Um, this Phoenix was introduced in 1828. Okay, then you get the twin eights here. Some reason, I don't know why, but the number eight and eight represents the, the 20 towers, okay? I'm going to say the pine towers. So the pine towers, for whatever reason, eight, eight is like a really famous number for it to go around. So I don't know if that's, if this is where they actually got this number from, because this currency started coming in in 1828. So you get the two eights here. Now, if you go back to the future in the movie, you have 88 miles per hour. So there you get the number 88 again. I mean, we can even get deeper, not to get off track, but just to show you how number 88 still floats around. In 1988, they came out with a movie called Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. And if you didn't really know, they were supposedly representing the Twin Towers. Okay, I'm going to get into that a little bit there, but I'm just showing you how the number 88 kind of follows suit and the World Trade Center. All right. So, and then I was looking at this. And then, we'll cut my eye here. Let's see. All right. So, just to get into it a little bit over here. See, underneath this little circle, it says, we placed the Ottoman curry. So, they were an empire. And they took over the Byzantine Empire, I believe. And also, Ottoman, if you remember in um, The Simpsons, the guy who drives the school bus, they call him Otto. And sometimes Bart calls him Otto Man. Hey, Otto Man. So that's how that relates. And then if 
you watch, I don't forget what video it was, but I showed you a video of which one of the couch gags and they had a newspaper in the, in the couch's hand and it says something about the um, Ottoman Empire or something like that. So it just shows you how these things all correlate with one another. And I can show you, hold on. Okay, as you know, I was starting to look at the minting of the Phoenix coin, right? And if you also know that this coin was actually, was used like around the Byzantine Empire when they were um, ruling the Romes and stuff like that. And funny enough, there was a small section, I think it was the Crim, Crimson or Crim, Crime, somewhere in the Ukraine where it was a small section where the Black Sea was where um, the Byzantine Empire actually ruled over. And it was actually a piece of the land of Ukraine <laughs> right now. So a lot of this thing is like all connecting. You know, the Byzantine um, Empire would relate to the Byzantine fault tolerance that H-Bar uses. And Cosmos, they, they use the Tendament. Tendament uses that that particular uh, consens consensus. Now, as I read this down here, whatever, I'm reading the Minting of Phoenix, and I get all the way down, sorry, I get all the way down here, and I see Staters. And I'm like, where do we remember that name from? And if you can see, the staters of Ajin were minted in around 700 BC. And they were the first to circulate in the ancient Greek world. So this was like the first set of currencies, basically. Now, if we know that we're going to a digital currency, then we know that we're going to a whole new set of currencies. A whole new way of dealing with payments and stuff like that. Automatically, there's going to be data, no more paper. So... I found that interesting, and then we go in, <laughs> and then on the, remember on the truck that I just showed you, it said Statler's um, Toyota. Now you just remove the L, because like I said, they're not going to actually put it that directly. I mean, they'll put it right in your face, but sometimes they'll switch things around, add a letter, maybe, you know, reverse the numbers to the extent. So I just found it um, pretty interesting. So let's go check Stater's out. So here's the definition of stator. It was an ancient coin used in various regions of Greece. The term is also used for similar coins. Imitating Greek staters minted elsewhere in the ancient Europe. And if you look a little bit over here, I'll show you. There goes the horse, the Pegasus horse. Remember in Back to the Future, they were talking about the racehorsing and stuff like that. I mean... And this was another thing over here. When you go and look at the history, right? Over here, right in the beginning of the history, it says the stator as a Greek silver currency. Silver currency. So once I seen that, I started thinking about Back to the Future. Because, you know, I seen Stater into Back to the Future. So then I started thinking about um, what else was silver. Then you had the DeLorean. The DeLorean was silver. And if you remember when Marty went to go play the guitar in front of the amp and he blew out the amp right in the beginning of um, part one, when he picks up the pick before he plays the guitar, they show that the, the pick is silver. So, I, in my own opinion, not financial advice, I think that silver has more of a chance to multiply than gold. If you got big money, then it would make sense for somebody to buy gold to turn that over. But if you don't got that much, you know, I'm to a big money, I'm talking about like, you know, five, six digits, you know, investing into some type of gold. If you don't got that type of money, then silver is perfect. Copper is perfect. In New York City, they just came out with some scratch-offs um, like precious metal scratch-offs, copper, silver, platinum, gold. So I found that pretty interesting that they just came out with that scratch-off, being that all these things are happening and the, you know, the thing with the war and stuff like that. What else we have here I can show you? Okay, so I'm bringing you the map of the Byzantine Empire and where they were ruling and what sections they ruled at. All right, and... Look up there where the Black Sea is right here. See that little nipple? There's a little nipple right there. That little nipple's part of Ukraine. Okay? 
And there's some shit going on there also that nobody knows about because they don't talk about it on the news. To my understanding, they got some shortage of water supply. They're killing the agriculture and everything over there also. But who knows? Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that the Byzantine Empire also nicks a little bit of Ukraine. And Ukraine right now is in the war. And like I said, if you didn't know, I think things are just heating up in the beginning of the <coughs> excuse me. In the beginning of the year, we had the um, Super Bowl. The team that won was the Rams. They were blue, yellow, colors, white. Same colors as Ukraine's colors. They played in the SoFi Stadium, which is a crypto wallet. And they also had crypto commercials. The most watched event, sport event, pretty much in the world. Now they're getting the masses prepared for adoption. You know, they're showing you the color. They showed you the color earlier in the in the year, the blue and yellow. They got everybody hyped up. They show you the crypto wallet in the stadium. And now they had the commercials. Then we had the trucker convoy thing that happened in Canada. Then they showed that they, you know, people that were with regular banks had their bank accounts frozen. And they also wrote a letter to a crypto exchange that's decentralized, trying to freeze accounts. And they, this time, this story showed that how cryptocurrency can be really important when you have control of your own keys, they can't freeze your account. So they wrote back to the government stating that we can't freeze nobody's account because we have no control over them because they control their own keys. Then we have the Russian war that pops up. All right. And then you get the Ukraine colors also. And we also know that XRP was tested by Russia in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And I also believe that Putin didn't really get phased when they were talking about sanctions because he was like, I'll just use Bitcoin to get around the system. So I want to show you something here. Now, Luke Oil, I believe, is part of Russian oil, right? But look at the top. <laughs> look at the top here. Look at here. It said XRP symbols. I'm telling you, I think we're super, super near, man. Why else would they have those type of symbols on the freaking gas station? Luke Oil, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. So we get back into here. Yeah, this is the Benzatine Empire, baby. And like I said, this has to do with, you know, some of the consensus. Um, Tendament uses it for Cosmos. Um, HBAR uses that particular thing. And today, college basketball, right? Duke and Syracuse is playing. And I want to show you why that's important. Okay, let's jump back and forth. So here's one of the stories that I looked up here. It was in 2022. So see the Russians. And look how everything's connected over here. The Russians are talking about the Ukraine authorities. They cut off the water flowing into, right, Crimea. And that they're destroying the agriculture, harvest, and all that stuff, right? And not giving enough water to the people out over there. This war is all about also adopting crypto, I believe. And if that's the case, how funny is it that they talk about a drought in that, in that particular section? That's Crema, right? That's the name of that little section right there. And they're talking about a drought that's happening over there. And we know that XRP is looking to fulfill liquidity. So, I mean, it deals with water, it deals with all this stuff. And it's almost like saying the banks also are like out, you know, dry. And this is what they did. So, I mean, it, it could be totally coincidental, but I just find it so crazy how everything is so connected with one another. And let me show you something else today. I mean, this might have nothing to do with it, but I just found this interesting anyway that they also have a bridge over there. It's called the Kremlin Bridge, All right? And if you read on the bottom over here, it says it's making it the longest bridge Russia has ever built and the longest bridge in Europe. So, I mean, it's one of the biggest on that side, you know, and they have it, Kremlin Bridge. And I'm just say, stating that is because, you know, we we're talking about that little section over there by the Black Sea. Okay, now just check this out because you're going to bug out. 
Now, we're talking about the Corinth, right? This says the Corinth is twinned with Syracuse, Sicily. So you see Syracuse there? I found that totally, totally bizarre. And they talk about that this is part of the Twin Cities, right? Today, in, um, in New York, they had college basketball going off. And it was Duke versus Syracuse. And I want you to see what this guy is wearing on his head. And he's pointing to it. Over here, look at this. Now, funny enough, look what it says. It says 88 points there. I find that so crazy. So we got 88 points there. See over here, it says Syracuse. But look at his headband there. That's what's important. Let me see if I can really get it there. All right, you see there? It says, instead of saying automatic, it says automatic. Now, that automatic, O-T-T-O-M-A-N, would be Ottoman which is the same empire that took over when they were talking about the phoenix and all that stuff. And I just find it funny that they have this, <laughs> 88 points there. And just look above, look at the border, just around 88. You don't see it anywhere else. See the, the points? Look at the XRP symbols. I mean, that looks like XRP symbols to me. I could make it XRP symbols if I wanted to. But I find the XRP symbols, that would definitely be next to 88. So I just found that crazy, and that was today. That they're actually playing. I don't know who won yet. I think the game is still going on. But, yeah, I mean, I really found that interesting. It's like how everything just kind of connects. And see how he was pointed to his head? If you go back, you can rewind it. He was pointed to his head. Like, he wanted you to see that. He wanted you to see that particular freaking name on his head. Because they want you to understand. Like, this, they're talking about the Greeks now. You know what I mean? And they're back over here in Russia. I can play another clip from... Um, I can't do it on here. I have to do it from my phone. But from a digital aspect, let me see if I can pull it up. And I'll just play the audio. Okay, I'm going to just play the audio. You don't really need to see anything. It's just more of listening to what he has to say. Fiasco. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, well, if you're under, you know, 50, you probably never heard of it. And if you're over 50, you may barely recall it. But I, I lived through it. I negotiated that bailout. And um, we were hours away from closing every every market in the world. That didn't happen because we did the bailout. But it was a close-run thing, as Wellington said. And uh, we were hours away from shutting every market in the world. Now we realized oh, the hedge fund was over leverage. Okay, fine. Uh, but it started with Russia. It started on August 17th, 1998, when Russia defaulted on their internal external debt and devalued the currency. And then that started a cascade because, you know, Credit Suisse was a big underwriter of Russian bonds. We had some long-term capital, but we didn't lose money. We didn't lose that much money in Russian bonds. We lost money on everything else, on $1.4 trillion worth of derivatives when spreads widened because it was a full-scale global liquidity crisis. But it started with Russia. It did not start in Greenwich, Connecticut. It just ended up there. My point being, um, here we go again. He started with Russia. He goes, here we go again. It started with Russia. Here we go again. And where are we? We are in Russia. In war right now. And look, <clears throat> right over here, like I was saying, I showed you the freaking Duke. The Duke had the freaking thing on his head that says automatic. See, this says Ottoman Empire. How everything's connected, and he was playing in Sy Syracuse, was playing Duke, and I just showed you the Twin Cities, and this I want you to know too, Jul Julius Caesar, okay, that name Julius Caesar, because um, in Twins in the movie it was Arnold Schwarzenegger and it was Danny DeVito, and Arnold was actually called Julius in there, and Danny DeVito's name in the movie was called Benedict. And you know what? Let's go check it out real quick. Before I jump over to twins, <clears throat> I just want you to listen to what Marty says, actually, right after this car over here, when he sees this car. To me, he's looking at the new future of currency over here. Okay? This is my vision. Okay? I'm not saying it's correct. We're just having fun. But in my eyes, I think that Marty's looking at this particular car, seeing Statler, knowing it was the first currency back in the Greek world, and stating like, wow. And watch what he says. He's going to say, someday, someday. And that someday is someday this year, I believe. I really hope. 
I mean, listen, look, look at over here. It says gas war is over here. It says gas war. Why would it say gas war is here? Okay. This is what they're talking about. We have seen all-time highs right now. They keep talking about all-time highs and everything. So let me just play this real quick. Listen to what he says. Someday, Jennifer. Someday. Someday. Wouldn't it be great? Take that truck up to the lake. To the lake, liquidity. Throw a couple of sleeping bags in the back. S overnight. Fly out underneath the stars. Underneath the stars. So, you hear what he says? He's talking about going to the lake with his water, with sleeping bags, sleeping under the stars. Like, this is why we think it's going to happen overnight. You know? I can see the price, like, drip, dripping down and dropping and having people panic, like, oh my God, oh my God. And then, like, really trying to shake off the last freaking Mohegans that can't hold on. And then all of a sudden, like, right overnight, boom, $22, $14 to $22. To thirty-three dollars, to fifty-five dollars, to eighty-eight dollars. After eighty-eight, I gotta see XRP hit eighty-eight. I'm telling you right now, if XRP hits eighty-eight dollars, I mean, I don't know when it's gonna hit eighty-eight dollars, but when it does get to that moment where it starts climbing to the top, to like three digits, I'm telling you, I want to see if freaking XRP hangs around eighty-eight dollars. You got to tell me that my videos have been golden. I've been telling you the number 88 is it's a special gift. And I actually ran into um, a new YouTube channel that actually showed me like a lot of the importance of 88. And for whatever reason, like I said, this cur the Phoenix currency was introduced in 1828. So I don't know if they're getting the eights from that point. And they're relating that the eights are, you know, mirrored. They're similar, just like the Pine Towers. There were twins, and those are twin numbers. And it's just crazy how, like, you know, everything kind of connects and stuff like that. So here, he was part of the movie there. You don't see how Danny DeVito is leaning into Arnold. You don't see the twin towers right there. You don't see the checkerboard on the floor with the Masons. Yeah, it's happening. And this movie came out in 1988. And I can show you a few lyrics in here, some skits that actually, um, it's kind of scary. I'll just let you listen to it. But I just wanted to show you this and how they were representing the Twin Towers and how number 88 falls into. And this movie is 1988. And when the Phoenix currency first came out was in 1828. So there's a lot of eights floating around. And like I said, and I'm showing you, they're talking about the war. And I showed you over here with the gas wars and the gas prices. I'm thinking the Ukraine thing is the um, the final phase for this push for crypto. If Putin starts using crypto to um, move his money around, I'm sure that America is going to put in full speed turbo uh, igniting <laughs> pilot engines. To go full speed ahead to make sure that uh, they put regulations on these things and get some uh, regulatory clarity. So, I think we just need to hold tight. I think we're right around the corner. And, um... So here he started on the bridge. This is Back to the Future Part 3. See these flags on the side over here? There's a blue and yellow also, too. It might not be the Ukraine's flag, but the same colors are there. I want you to see what destroys the DeLorean. What colors destroy the DeLorean? And pay attention. Watch the colors of the train. Silver. Watch the color of the train. Blue and yellow. Ukraine coming through, baby. I'm telling you, I don't know if it's a coincidence of the colors matching up, but I'm telling you, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling it. Okay, I want you to see this part over here. End of the track. For some reason, this didn't give me the option to slow this down. But I want you to pay attention because this is where the ashes come in and then the phoenix rises from here. So 
this explodes and I want to show you. Listen real closely. Right here, look. Right, see that? You see that burst? Now you can rewind it, pause it, but I just showed you, it shoots right up this alleyway right here. It shoots, and then boom, it starts off just like this. Oh, I'm back. Again, I'm just gonna play real quick. I want you to notice when it comes into the scene, it, it blasts three times. It could be XLM, XRP, whatever you wanna think, whatever you wanna believe. Yeah, one, two, three. So, and then like I said, it starts off there. The the uh, train crashes. I believe that the phoenix shoots out of the ashes. It rises. And then they go onto the bridge over here. And then they show you how the DeLorean gets destroyed by the blue and yellow train. So I'm really hoping that this is the time for us this year. This year. And to be honest, there's no sense of looking at charts anymore or following people to find out when the price is going to jump. Because no one really knows, honestly. Okay? But I will say, though, if everybody talks about the numbers, you know, what are um, waters above, I think, I follow. And a lot of these people say, you know, the number 22 is like a really important year, a very important number. is an angel's number, a master builder number, a master destroyer number. So I'm really hoping that in March we destroy this shit and then April and May we, we rise it up. I want to show you another clip. You ever heard of Trading Places? That came out pretty early too. I want to show you one scene which makes me bullish a little bit. Here, I just want to show you. Maybe you can see it. It goes from light to dark. Now, you see what he says here? If you could read the things. I'm considering going long on April wheat. What do you think? Now, remember, we've seen the name April in, uh, in The Simpsons in the Bitcoin episode. This guy just said he's considering going long on, on April wheat. Now, I'm going to show you. Let me play this now. Play it out. Now see what he says over here? Shouldn't do something like that, judge on the Russian. That who isn't gonna blah, 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 whatever he's gonna say. So, and I'm, I'm bringing up that movies because like I said, I found a new channel where it shows nothing but movies and symbols inside the movies. And they brought up this particular movie. And whatever, I just happened to be listening in the background, and when he said Russia, it caught my ear, and I had to go back. And I'm like, you know, supposedly trading places is supposed to be um, also a symbolism of, you know, the, the towers, representing trading places and stuff like that. And when you hear about two worlds colliding, let me explain what that means. When they say two worlds colliding, the two worlds were the two world trade centers. Okay, that's what's the two worlds and they collide as one, right? Two worlds colliding into one. What do we have now? The two towers collided. And now we have the one world trade, one world trade, one way, one religion, one rule, one currency, which I believe will be cryptocurrency. All right, and then right before I just recorded this, look what this says. Hi, I'm April. I'm here to help. I know tax season can be a little messy. And then she states, oh, looks like you're really cleaned up. Oh, looks like you're really cleaned up. Switch the tax acts. But look at the X here. That could be an XRP symbol, maybe. I don't know. But I just found it funny that she said April. She mentioned April. And then she mentioned about cleaning up. Oh, it looks like you really cleaned up. And then she has this purple umbrella, the royal purple color, and all this money falling down. I mean, I don't know, man. I really hope that April is going to be a nice little pump. 
I really do. I'm just going back over here again to this image because I really hope that uh, I enlightened you with this video that I showed you. You know, it has some new currencies. I showed you that Stater was actually back in the days. Um, some currency. It was the, the first currency back in the Greeks. In Greece, in the Romes. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, I pointed this out over here. Gas war. This is what, you know, they're talking about now. Everybody's seeing um, all-time highs right now. So I really hope that this is where we're supposed to be. I really do. So thank you for coming, watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing. Please do all of it. Don't cost you a penny. It's just the way we're looking at this particular video. And I hope I was open. I would hope I was able to open your eyes to a uh, new vision. Thank you for coming. Not financial advice here. Love you guys. And I'm out.